I think aviation's here to stay forever. And what we're seeing in today's world is unmanned air vehicles is starting to become more and more part of today's world. And so when you look at aviation, everyone thinks pilot and they think pilot in the plane, but in fact, there's a whole there's a cluster of things that make aviation happen. From building the planes to then flying the planes and maintaining the planes. So from an importance perspective, uh, you know, we can run our society and the way we run our society with aviation, so it's here to stay. My name is Flack McGuire, uh, organization I founded and lead is Virtual Flight Academy. We started working on it probably over eight years ago. And the focus of Virtual Flight Academy is helping prepare people for military flight training and civilian flight training. But our question is working with volunteers, former civilian aviators, military aviators, how much can we train aviation working on PC-based simulation and then help build that so they get to real flight training. The question is, is then how can we get young people interested in it? And then once they've got the exposure for the number of kids who say, hey, I want to go further with it, how far can we take them? Right? That's, that's an open-ended question. We don't know yet. But we're going to try to push that boundary to see how far so that then as they prepare for that career, they may be at a whole different level than they would be otherwise. Well, welcome to uh, Kearney Junior ROTC uh, Flight Simulation Lab. I'm Colonel Tim Swan, the Senior Army Instructor, and this is one of our flight sim stations here at uh, Kearney High School where cadets can come in and learn about aviation. And it's not so much about learning to fly, although that's what we do here also, but it's about the STEM aspects of aviation, the science, the uh, technology, the engineering, and the mathematics that make airplanes fly, how do we plan uh, flight plans, what makes the airplane fly, uh, how do we calculate load plans and performances to do certain characteristics we want to do with an aircraft. And we teach uh, the students in here how to do that so you get a real first-hand experience how to fly. And as you can see by the uh, simulator station, we have a lot of the same type of controls that you would find in a Cessna 172 the way we have it configured right now. This bank of switches here, this is your engine switch off your right and left magneto both on and the engine on and you can see that on the control panel right here if I turn the wheel here and for example there's the landing light switch and I want to turn the landing lights on I just go to my landing light switch and it turns on and of course as we're on the runway for takeoff we want to make sure that our beacon is on our navigation lights are on and our landing lights are on for the takeoff over here we have the radio panel, which corresponds to the radio panel on the Cessna 172. So instead of using a mouse to control the radio panel, we can just simply come to the knob and turn for our communication and our navigation radios. We've got our autopilot set up, which again corresponds to the autopilot. So we can do the auto, all the autopilot settings uh, as you would an airplane with a switch and a knob rather than clicking on the simulator. Uh, we want to make sure that our, our trim control is set for takeoff. So we can look down here, and here's our trim wheel. And we have the trim wheel right here on the system. So we set the trim wheel so it's set for takeoff. And then we have our throttle and um, fuel mixture here. The throttle pulled all the way out. Is it idle? Pushed all the way in. Is it full? Then the mixture is the amount of fuel and air that's mixed into the engine for combustion for power. Uh, at sea level, we want a pretty rich mixture, but as we, that we go up uh, high in the atmosphere and there's less air, we want to bring the fuel mixture back to balance out, leaning the mixture so that the air and the fuel is balanced. We've got our rudder pedals here, which control uh, the rudder with the uh, feet, which airplane left and right and also on the ground. That's how we steer it. We have our aileron control, which makes the bank, the airplane bank left or right for turning. And then we have the elevator control, both up and down. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and push the throttle in and roll down the runway. We're at runway 28 at Montgomery Field. And we're just going to go down the runway to our takeoff speed. which in this plane is about 60 knots. So as we get to 60 knots, we're going to gently pull back on the stick, and then we're going to become airborne. And what we want to do is we want to fly down the runway heading until we clear, clear the runway.
and we're clear of the runway, we can go ahead and make a left turn. And we can look out the window, and this is Montgomery Field. Here is the uh, 163 freeway. There's Mount Soled off to the right. And then one of the interesting features about flying out of Montgomery Field is we can fly over Kearney High School and you can see the football field and the track out here in the distance. Of course, don't attempt to do this at home because we wouldn't really fly out of Montgomery Field like this, but I just wanted to show you Kearney real quick. There's our field and I'll pause it. There's our softball field, our baseball field, our football field, and our buildings at Kearney High School. So that's a quick overview on the uh, flight simulator taking off from Montgomery Field using all the controls in the Cessna 172 and an overflight of Kearney High School.